Hey everyone, Dev here and welcome to the channel's annual Quest Games tier list. We're feeling a little bit festive this year because I'm recording this before Christmas. Normally it is a period of pure struggle and just horror in general, but for some reason this time around it feels different and like more organized in general, which doesn't really happen that often. But at last we are here to do the damn thing. Maybe I should probably shave myself for this occasion. <laughs> okay, now it feels more appropriate. I did some modifications in terms of the list template. I was always calling out one game as a game of the year, but never actually highlighted it visually. So this time around we're doing that. I'm also gonna split the making of this video in two. Like to watch it's gonna be just one piece, but I wanna make sure I will get every single title of this year. And you never know if after Christmas something actually releases additionally. So quick recap of the rules because it's a fairly unique selection of stuff. This whole list consists mostly of the games that released on the official store this year like a fully fledged project but I also include some other titles that definitely deserves more recognition in the VR space. Some I also disqualified because they were either too short or felt like a demo or a taste of something so it's not like a comparison of every single game with each other but rather a compilation of stuff that are in their own league and they're competing with its own potential and status polish like if they can be better or worse in the state of their release. That's pretty much my criteria, like I care mostly about the polish, execution, the design, like you can have a shit concept, if it's well made then that's what I mostly care about, so let's go. <laughs> First out of the gate, Final Space, B tier. It was like a project based on a TV series that died, introducing some mechanics that I've never seen used before. It's fairly good though for a very specific audience that actually knows what's going on and it's more on an arcadey side of things, so it was an alright start of the year. Garden of the Sea, A tier. Super fun like a farming slash adventure simulator. There were some minor issues in terms of the comfort and overall control scheme but besides that it was like a very innovative and advanced title of that genre a very good representation in one package so great Anshar 2 B tier overall solid very much reminded me of end space very hard in terms of the locomotion and just the immersion one of the most like intense experiences on the platform if you put yourself in a first person cockpit like not for everyone and something that we've kind of already seen it's fine nonetheless Lost Recipes, B tier, an actual first cooking simulator that I enjoyed all the way. As much as I loved the concept, the execution in some parts of the game did make sense or it wasn't as highly polished, though I do very much like future games like that to follow its steps because the whole learning of new recipes can be very beneficial and is just so much fun, so hopefully we will get more things like that. Avicii Invector, E tier, a rather disappointing port of a music game from a dead artist by now. There's a lot of problems in terms of just the port itself, the control scheme, the mechanics, features like so many things are not okay here. The only thing that's done well is the music itself but it was already done beforehand like I don't need to like the artist to know that this whole project really doesn't justify the price it's asking for what it gives essentially. Zenith, A tier, pretty much the most divided opinion wise game of the year. Personally I loved it even though it's not perfect by any means, it swings big and that's what I appreciate, like even in terms of the content there's just so much stuff to do that you can put countless hours into it and it's still not gonna be enough. My thing is that I never feel motivated to go back into it and grind all the way to the max level, Simply because it gets very repetitive and takes a lot of time to do it but with the recent updates it got way easier and more stuff can be accessed faster so I think it's on the right track it still needs more work put into it though. Let me body combat, S tier. I don't think I appreciate an exercise app as much as this one. It completely pulled me in and it's all thanks to the actual trainers that give you motivation, talk with you, interact while you're sweating your ass off. Something that in my eyes is a staple by now and I wish great things for it because it deserves it. Ultra Wings, B tier. Definitely a solid flying simulator like in a grand scheme of things. The whole vibe of it feels very like indie and simplistic in terms of the design. The gameplay at its core is fine but it's definitely not reinventing the wheel nor setting a standard moving forward like 
it's okay for now. Virtual Virtual Reality 2, Cityr. This was also swinging big, but the execution wasn't really enjoyable. Like I could tell it had its concept set in one concrete direction, but the whole pacing seemed off and it felt more confusing on what's even going on. It also had quite a few performance issues and I'm not sure if that was ever resolved, but that's the position it gets for me. <laughs> Unbinary, D tier. I wouldn't say this is like a good showing of puzzle genre in general, Sure, the art style is cool and very nice to look at, but besides that, the whole project doesn't seem really good to me. It's either unfinished or just lacking in the dev experience. Also tends to be confusing and a struggle to play with. Besides the graphical design, it's kinda a mess. Marineverse, B tier. For something that's not necessarily my cup of tea, it presented well itself with the concept. I wouldn't say it's the most professional looking app ever, nor the UI and the design is like amazing, but but as a sailing simulator it seems very much correct and intuitive. Very much for enthusiasts but for someone that wants to like learn sailing it's at least a good entry point to get to know it. Vox Machina, 8 year. As someone that did the whole playthrough, loved it all the way. Sure some things are janky in terms of the character's movements and face reactions. The thing is that personally I got very much attached to the characters there and the whole vibe of it. Like it felt homey in a way. You don't feel like you're playing a simulator, but rather being actually there and just living in that space. So whoever was in charge of this environment did a very darn good job. And alongside it, the whole gameplay with the mix and stuff feels very nice and entertaining. So there are a few stuff that could be polished, but for me in general, it's a very good game. Hitchhiker, CTR. Kind of an unexpected game to be honest, because I was feeling that it's gonna be more puzzle or like exploration based adventure game, but it fast turned out to be like a horror or a creepy thing. It's like a below average port from the pancake. It could be well made but the mechanics doesn't really work well in terms of interaction or just the whole compatibility with the player and the title. Kinda sucks because it seemed promising but it's definitely not like a top tier game on the store. Knock, S tier. I needed to play it only once to know that it's something highly polished with the concept that isn't overly complicated but you're the one that make the gameplay simple or very much intricate and I'm saying that as a person that loves archery in general it has a very competitive nature and that's pretty much the point of it if it's in your interests. Alvo, D tier. Among so many shooters that released up until now I consider this one to be below average honestly. Apparently it got many updates since its release but in the first day there were so many things going on with it. If it's the control scheme the abnormal number of cheaters in the matches it's probably due to the fact that it came from the PSVR and for like a quest standards, I don't really like it. Startenders, 8 year. A very solid barman simulator set in like a job simulator-ish mechanics. It's mostly an arcade game where you make cocktails for the orders and use what you have around you in the workstation. Everything was pretty much correct, but it's just that it uses a specific formula that works well, but it's not innovating the platform whatsoever. The Tale of Onogoro, B tier. It's a good game overall and I played it all the way. The highs are definitely the graphics and boss fights were a lot of games don't excel at but on the other hand the storyline and the dialogues were rather annoying and taking up so much of your time you felt like you had to rush through the content to even reach the actual important stuff. Really liked interactivity in terms of the puzzles and the whole world design is just it could be better in terms of the actual pleasure of playing it. Tentacular, 8 tier. Very fun puzzle game which uses physics engine to play and interact with stuff which is a bit unusual. It can be perceived as a kids game but it has some deeper stuff going on and it can get complex in some parts but it's definitely something that's for every audience if you're into the puzzle genre in general. Cosmonius High, S tier. Even though you didn't see much gameplay from me on the channel, as a something that comes from the job simulator developers, it's definitely living up to its own legend, presenting something that's still set in some kind of similar world but more expanded in a way that the quest generation of VR players can be reintroduced in their work. It's a great title all across the board with some stuff I don't agree with in terms of the locomotion or something but the pros really outweigh the cons in this case. IB Cricket, B tier. It's a first game on the platform of its kind. If you've never played the sport itself it's gonna introduce you well into it and presenting everything well according to the real life stuff. It's neither amazing nor the worst game ever. Like I'm not into that particular sport 
so on the first glance it seemed good enough for something that was never available on the store so it's okay even though it needs more context from someone that actually enjoys it. Green Hell, A tier. For a survival simulator that actually makes sense in terms of its features, it's a pretty good game for its own genre. It was also a first one that was using the ASW technology and I think that's mostly why it's not like in the S tier or something, cause even though it was possible to port it for the Quest platform, to me the whole performance just seemed off in comparison to every other game. Like it was very distracting and just didn't seem correct if that makes sense. The whole project I very much enjoyed and I wish one day I would do the playthrough on it, but for now let's leave it at that on the list. Cities VR, B tier. The first city simulator that hit the store this year, it needed to fill some big shoes coming from the Skyline series and it ended up fine overall. It's not very good in terms of explaining stuff and the performance can be janky at times with the frame rate. It's definitely a bit more complicated simulator of this kind where you need to manage properly and take care of multiple stuff that needs to be done to run the whole ecosystem of the city but as ambitious as it can get everyone that's like into that stuff should enjoy it as well. Blaze Rush B tier. It's something that we've seen already before the quest was even a thing. Content wise there's a lot of discover and it's a good take on the genre altogether but at this point you need to be like a magician to make concepts like that outstanding and enjoyed by everyone equally so as it is it's pretty okay. Little Cities A tier. You can't help but to compare it to Cities VR which I still feel to this day was pretty weird how it was supposed to launch first but then it was delayed. I do enjoy this project more even though it's on a simpler side of things. I think it's just the overall execution and cohesiveness that it comes natural while just creating unique projects and systems on the islands. It is also pretty polished and just chill vibes only so it's placing high on the list because of that. Aria Man Lives D tier. A bit confusing release to me that I thought I would enjoy because I started to appreciate more that genre of games. I just didn't get where this title was going and what's like the purpose of it or the goal. Like I spent a lot of time in the overview to grasp what's going on and I still to this day don't know what. Warhammer Tempestfall B tier. It's definitely the best VR Warhammer game to date. It started off very rocky on the PC VR but it got more fleshed out when it came to the quest. It's still like not amazing when I did the whole playthrough or even like some part of it because I was cut off by the software issues. I did enjoy it because it's in my gaming lane but the whole execution could be way better I guess it's just because that for this genre I have just higher expectations in general. Ping Pong Pro C tier. For some reason on the store it seemed like people ganked up on it calling it the worst game of the year. For me it wasn't that bad but it wasn't good either. It's mostly because the 11 legacy is real and at this point nothing really can close the gap with it. It has pretty underwhelming graphics for a ping pong game. The mechanics are rather average as well. I suppose it's a lost title but it was received too harsh honestly. First person tennis A tier. It's slowly coming very close to my sport that I was all about when I was still in high school. Badminton was a pretty big part of me growing up and tennis is like a sister sport to it. The game overall is a very good simulator of the actual real thing that's happening on the field. What's not pushing it to the S tier is that it needs more in terms of features and possibilities because you can make tennis games very fun even though you're not into that at all. For someone that knows what's up and searches for like a realistic simulator, this is definitely the one. Wings 1941 B tier. Very cool voxel bullet hell. We have a few of those already on the store if it's for the graphics or the genre itself. It needs more polished out VR features but besides that it's a very solid thing for its kind. The last clockwinder S tier. Very much impressive and innovative title that apparently by meta is the game of the year on the store. No doubt it it's great. On launch there was only one thing missing which was the proper locomotion for me but that eventually was added in and well all the chaos in terms of the recordings will go down then we'll definitely do the playthrough of this game because it's absolutely worth it if it's that high on the list just from the first impressions. World of Max C tier. It's pretty unfortunate it came after Vox released which I feel like if it was before then the reception would be better. The whole experience to me was a bit shallow and too arcadey for its own good, like you really felt like it's a port from a phone or any other mobile platform just VRized. Like on the first glance it seems great but when you actually play it things unravel and you realize what's happening. Modern Gunship Forge S tier. For something that seems like a very early VR days project, in terms of the possibilities and 
the whole gameplay is pretty amazing how it feels like in the headset. In the overview I had like literally no notes and that doesn't happen that often. I think it's just so different from all those dynamic-ish wave shooters where the arsenal of weapons and modifications is so huge that the potential is like limitless in terms of challenge and replaying the game over and over. So it's a very good game even though we didn't really do that much on the channel. The American Dream, Etier. Besides the controversy in terms of the concept and its content, the game itself isn't really that good. Surely for its time it might be funny and something enjoyable but for this day and age the translation is really bad and it's both too simplistic and not even funny to me and I'm not sure if anyone will find it otherwise nowadays. Once Alliances, S tier. I thought it's gonna be a fail coming from the prequel because the gameplay dynamic was drastically changed but after locomotion updates and some other fixes I feel like it's one of the best things that released this year. That might be because I just love this series in general that I see the potential of it and its polish. I just find it really good if it's for the competitive side or just entertainment in general like whenever I have some spur free time I play this game at home because it's just absolutely my cup of tea. Ruins Magus 8 year. This game was one of the ones that I enjoyed very much this year. I think the potential of it was still not fulfilled. There are many things that I would do differently in terms of the design and just the whole accessibility in terms of VR. It's like amazing and it challenges in a way that you don't do the same thing over and over and you have to adapt to the gameplay that it presents. Thief Simulator D tier. I think the detriment of this game was the platform itself because it has so many features packed in that it could be a very good game but it's just that the limits of the system itself and the unpolishedness doesn't really justify the whole concept. It's a shame because in many ways it's innovative but no one will care about it up until it's gonna be just fleshed out and ready to enjoy. The Twilight Zone D tier. Even though the overview failed on it miserably I could tell the execution is not as smooth as other horror games on the platform. It uses pretty neat features that we've not seen before like using your own voice to terrorize and chase you around but it's too janky for its own good and you can notice those little things all the time. Table of Tales B tier. Did the playthrough all the way? It's a true for the genre a tabletop RPG game where a lot of stuff that you do might not matter but the game is actually much more complicated on the story decision making that it seems and I wish I would say the same in terms of the combat system and its rules. There are few bugs and many things don't make sense in the combat standpoint. Everyone that's like into this stuff should play it but don't expect that it's gonna be amazing and highly polished with the UI and the design like where it excels which is characters and the whole narration that's where you should look at it. Moss Book 2 Game of the Year. It comes as absolutely no surprise to anyone that followed the channel or the playthrough that I did. It absolutely swept everything for me this year. Every single thing coming from the prequel was upgraded and worked upon. You can't really explain it if you won't play it yourself like the game is so special and you can tell that it was made with pure love and dedication to its craft like you can go on and on and Moss as a series will forever have a place in my heart just like Quill has. Cooking Simulator E tier. Let's say just as a prefix I'm a cook by profession and I found this project specifically to be kind of offensive like nothing's fun about it because that's part of my life and it's just not enjoyable at all if you're talking about the precision the mechanics like I don't know if the port is really bad or it's made to be frustrating and just annoying like I don't get it and it might be specifically me it's really a shame but we'll get some other cooking game styles in the future. Shock Troops A tier our doom like shooter for the platform it's very cool and eventually we'll do a playthrough on it it doesn't take itself seriously in terms of the mechanics and combat features like it's simple as it is it puts you in a space with just aliens and monsters that wants to kill you and you just cause mayhem in general so it didn't need to reinvent the wheel nor make things complicated like that's where it excels at. Car Mechanic Simulator E tier. It seems like this year I had a whole vendetta against simulator games like I'm not sure if it's because that my VR experience grow rapidly and I notice when the game's design is really bad and the polish levels are like non-existent. I'm not a mechanic by any means that's my father's job. I just don't imagine anyone trying it out because most of the things there work against you and besides the visuals there are not many things VR wise going on. Warplanes Battles Over Pacific. B tier. For some reason I feel like the first game was way better than this one and I 
don't think it was because we are now in the different times and different machinery was used. I found myself way comfortable playing the planes from the prequel and the graphics as well. So like this a downgrade a little bit, but it's still a fairly decent game. Red Matter 2, S tier. This also comes as a no surprise because you can't put this one anywhere else than here. If it's for the graphics alone or the absolute upgrade from the first game, this series every time sets a standard for the polish and visuals. Like it's an inspiration for many developers to have their projects made like that and it was always a living success on the store. Alter Breaker, D tier. There were high expectations from me personally coming from Swords of Gargantua. I'm not sure in what state it is now, but on launch, like it was very disappointing that the game went in the unpolished direction and sure it introduces some new combat mechanics, but if you make it that junky then nothing's gonna save it. I think the game altogether has a big potential, but it needs a lot to work to be done, it still feels like an early access stuff. Nerf Ultimate Championship, B tier. I think Nerf among the shooters in general has its own place because it's very simplistic and pleasant for entry level players that want to get into VR. It's not taking itself seriously nor reinventing the wheel, but literally anyone can find themselves there and experience some solid gameplay before all the complex ones. Jupiter and Mars, F tier. Someone had to be here and after perusing the higher tier, I feel like it's very much justified because I could not find a single thing that made this game special or pleasant to play like this game was previously on the PC VR and let's leave it at that because the quest one, my god it's bad and just a question who made it like that? Forever Cornhole, B tier. Not even mentioning the whole situation with me and this series, just like any other game from this dev team is fine. I will not stop saying that but I just have an issue with copying the mechanics, graphical design like every single thing is the same except for the sport and it might be just me and that's my list so that's how this. <laughs> Daisim, A tier. I absolutely adore this game by any means, and it surely has a potential to be in the S tier. I just wish, even for today's standards, it would change itself in terms of graphics and some simplistic visuals, but I completely understand from where it's coming from. It's been a legend in the VR community for so many years, and being on the official store for them, like, I'm very much happy about. It's just I see the potential of it, and someday I expect them to reach that. Eolia, D tier. I don't I don't think I ever mentioned it, but this game was supposed to be an eventual playthrough from me, but at some point, like 2-3 hours into it, I realized that I'm not enjoying it and I'm fighting a battle with the system that I won't win at the end of the day. I also don't like the game design altogether. I think it's just because of the devs inexperience in the gaming industry, like it does so many things against you that you don't play with it, but against it. Intercosmos 2000, E tier. Besides not understanding the concept whatsoever, this game had or still has, I'm not sure, huge performance issues that completely screwed me up while doing the overview. Like I could not spend inside of the game more than 10 minutes, not even mentioning the junky ass controls. Like it's mind boggling how the state of this game was made for the official store and to this day, I'm still confused. Into the Radius, S tier. The day I noticed that game on the PC VR and I played it for the first time, I knew that it's gonna be a hit for the quest platform and I was not mistaken. If I would be really into horror genre, I would absolutely play this, but it's too spooky for me to handle and it absolutely blows, but I could really tell that this game changes the game for the survival genre and introduces stuff that was never seen before in a more intricate way. Even the dump stuff like reloading bullet by bullet makes it so unique among other shooter games and I'm very happy it was recognized by the community, just very curious what's gonna be the future of it or just the other games that will be developed eventually. Librarium, B tier. I'm adding this game per se as an honorable mention because it's essentially an education app but made in a way that could be very beneficial for anyone that wants to learn something or bring a fresh perspective in the education system. It still needs a lot of features to be introduced and worked on but as it is, it's it's a pretty special application on its own. NFL Pro Era, A tier. Another overview that failed this year, but from my time looking into it, it's very safe to say this is the best like football game for Quest. And it's great because normally big names in the VR space would flop and use us as cash cows. But it's just nice to see that brand like NFL made sure to make something that football enthusiasts would find it as a good experience. Ancient Dungeon, S tier. If you've been following this project, you then know that it always deserved to be on the 
store and it's finally here. Just the whole dedication of the developer for this game is very much commendable and the talent is like undeniable. It's something that we'll eventually do on the channel more and it's just a nice to see its success. Ultimax, S tier, another very solid title coming from the resolution games. It's kinda comparable with Knock but set in a different gameplay mechanics. I would say both of them have its place on the store and everyone will find them enjoyable regardless of the similarities. It's hard to tell why I don't play it more, like I guess it's just not necessarily in my interest because it's not like a channel friendly but the project as a whole is very polished and very cool in general. <laughs> this Kronia, A tier. I have like a love-hate relationship with it because coming from Tokyo Chronos and Odeo's experiences I know what's good for the series, what things should be scrapped and the ones worked upon. I think the game hits hard, it absolutely could be better from it is now. Time travel gameplay is essentially limitless and you can do so much with it but at the end of the day I'm happy with the project and the upgrades made from the previous title are definitely noticeable and I appreciate that. <laughs> Crisis Brigade 2 A tier. I absolutely think everyone forgot that it actually released because it popped out at the same time like Bone Lab did. The first game I didn't really enjoy but this one was actually way more fun. It's set in its own specific genre that no one's really doing it nowadays. It knows itself well and it's super enjoyable though it needs more features going on for sure. Bone Lab, A tier. However you feel about this project you can't deny that it's something revolutionary for the platform and it was never done before on that scale. I have to admit the release day was pretty janky and I thought I would not touch it again but I actually came back to it after a few patches and at some point it's gonna be another playthrough on the channel. At its current state I really like it and now it is definitely more fun to play so it just means that not all lost is on the launch day and you can always redeem it yourself along the way. Townscaper, A tier. It is like a very definition of the more simplistic concept you can do the more polish you can put into it. There are very few things missing from it for me and on the first glance you'd pass it as something very boring and uneventful but it's actually a very good title something that also was never done before and I do like seeing stuff that changed the platform for the better. Runner, B tier. It is by far the most cursed game for the channel this year. I've had so many issues with it in terms of bugs or stuff that was apparently never happening for anyone else so while I was happy for being a free for all tester for the game it sucks that my frustration just gave in and my whole experience was just corrupted. It's a good game nonetheless I just wish some things would not happen but I guess it just meant to be that way. Gym class E tier. For something that's the first one to enter the store as a basketball game it should have been way more better from what it is. It's not that because it's free so you expect it from less but it seems like the features are there and the gameplay should be good is just rotten in every aspect of it and it might be just due to the performance and servers like I've not found a match where the stutters would not happen and the performance wouldn't destroy the game altogether so I'm not sure what's gonna be the future with this one but I hope that things will get better eventually. Arkaxer, A tier. For someone that was supporting and following the projects for years I was very much happy it officially launched just seeing how much work was put into it and the uniqueness of the gameplay really make it an outstanding game though I'm also a person to know that there are still a lot of things to be done in terms of polishness and bugs in general but I will forever support this game no matter what. Surgeoneer C tier. This was the moment when I got my Quest Pro and I guess it wasn't necessarily a good start with it mostly because I thought coming from Hand Physics Lab this game would be way better and follow the kind of prequel footsteps but it ended up very average and not as good as it had to be. I feel like in some stage of the development things went wrong and it didn't really have a successful release. Iron Guard B tier. I guess we had like a lot of firsts this year. In total a pretty cool tower defense game. What was unique about it is that you're not like an idle observator that put up some stuff on the map and let them do all the dirty work. You also interact with the world and contribute to the case so you get down dirty as well and it's pretty refreshing to see. Iron Man S tier. It was actually my second pick for the game of the year but it was automatically disqualified because it officially didn't release this year nor was it fair to put it instead of Moss. Having said that the game is absolutely amazing. There's not a single thing that it does bad. I encountered only one thing that did not work and it was at the absolute last of moments of the game. Like I'm very glad it released for us on the quest and it only proves that Sony can produce some solid stuff.
Source of Lossy, B tier. I think as a puzzle person in general, I enjoy it because it brings some new mechanics that was never seen before except for the puzzling places. I wish the UI and just the design was done differently but the core gameplay I don't mind at all and it can be challenging at times. It's also visually a very good experience so it's pretty solid for what it is. Cartoffel, A tier. Another proof that if you keep it as simplistic as it's possible and make your concept very clear to the audience then you'll have a great product on your hands. The only reason why it's not in S tier is that it's not a game of like a big scale so it wouldn't be really fair to other ones but as it stands it's very fun. <laughs> Among Us VR A tier. As someone that had nothing to do with the original game in the past this is really a good port. Sure it's missing like a VRized animations and interactions that would put it on the next level but it really brings a good immersion and a sense that you're out there to kill someone and now it's having a second life on the quest platform. Forever Pool, A tier. Even though I have some unexplained vendetta against the series, I found this game to be the best one of anything they released so far. If it's because it's the first pool game or it uses a lot of mechanics that just make sense, I mean good for them for making something that I can actually enjoy and not shit about. <laughs> Aspire 2, B tier. I didn't really have much expectations towards the sequel because I wasn't really interested in the prequel anyways and to me this game doesn't really feel that different or innovative as it should be. It brings some new features around but I don't think that it's something revolutionary for the platform. It still seems like a good game but I just wish that it would go in a bit different direction. What the bat? A tier. Honestly like a pure chaos in the flesh and that's the whole magic of the game like it's so fast paced that you don't even notice when you're zooming through the levels. It's a very fun game that uses like a simplistic mechanics though deep down there's a lot of thought put into it and it's something very unique on its own so anyone that wants to experience some good level of comedy then this is a really good example of it. Broken Edge, A tier. This game I preferred way more than Iron Lights that released a while back. The combat is very much understandable and high impact in a way it's easy to learn but hard to master so there's a lot of challenge going on here. The only thing is that I wish the whole introduction section would be much more dynamic and to the point because I felt like it was dragging too much but all in all the core game is very good. Nowntown, A tier. It's another honorable mention from me because I see a huge potential with it and it is kind of like a gamified language learning thing. Like I definitely see myself picking up some new vocabulary and playing with it more in the future is just there's so much possibilities with it that it can become a very big title in the future. Saint and Sinners Retribution, B tier. I don't think it's that much controversial to put it there because it's pretty much the most disappointing thing released this year. Starting with the fact that it's not a game, it's a DLC to the prequel, poorly made on top of that like I did not encounter so many bugs in so little time and I have to like push myself to even play it and it's not anymore because of the horror aspect. It really feels like we are guinea pigs for the future PSVR release or PC VR. Like this time around the roles were reversed and we didn't get a fleshed out thing like we should have been. It honestly should have been lower on the list but the project is still fine because of the Walking Dead legacy but the overall state of the game is just embarrassing to me. Compound, S tier. It was a really big surprise to me that something indie like that can be so good and so detailed in the gameplay aspects like it has a concrete vision, it knows what it is and it utilizes everything possible to make your dream vision for the game. I will surely try to play more with it in the future. It's very similar to Ancient Dungeons mentality, a very unique and fresh take on the genre that really stands out on its own. World War Tunes, D tier. I think as a first tank game on the platform it could be a very big success though it doesn't have a lot of features in it to support it at this point. The core gameplay and mechanics are there but you need to add more things going on to make it a very worthwhile title and have sort of like a need to play for your community. There's some potential with it, it just needs to clean up few stuff and bring out some actual polish. Line Light, B tier. I really have nothing against the actual game but I don't really see the need of a VR port of it. Like it's literally a flat screen in front of you and there's something happening like you'd be in the virtual desktop. It feels kinda lazy and maybe the developer didn't really have a lot of experience in the VR field. Like I don't see myself putting a headset specifically to play this game and I don't think I'm the only one thinking that way. Arcade Legend, C tier. I think the whole problem with this game is that the pacing is really slow and it didn't fit me at all. So besides the fact that I didn't get to experience it a lot, even basing on the mechanics and physics, it also doesn't seem high quality like it was a little bit struggling to put things in your arcade and as a perfectionist myself I would just be pissed off having things that are not straight or aligned to the walls. It's something you definitely need to put a lot of more time to 
fully utilize its features, but I just don't feel like putting so much work in one title to get to experience some cool stuff. Like, that's just too much. Gorilla Tag, BTR. As much as this game is a legend at this point, and it has like a set vision and mentality around it, I just don't see myself playing it because I just can't concerning my situation in the studio. This is something that you really need to have a lot of space and be very secure in throwing your hands around. The game is very simple and easy to understand, but it feels very old school and it doesn't feel like a very pleasurable experience if you don't have your space sorted out around you beforehand. Mask Maker, 8 tier. I think this is something very different for the platform and a game that I'm gonna definitely put more time into it. It uses features that I have never seen before and is very intriguing if it's pushing the limits of the possibilities around it with creating different worlds and masks. I do think it's gonna be a very good experience among all other puzzle games that we have and I honestly can't wait to dip it more into it. That seems to be all for now. As I said, I will split this video in two parts to just clean some things up and adjust the list sizes, sleep on some positions. Wish me good luck in the editing because it's gonna be eventful. <laughs> Alright, we're back from the break to finish this off. I'm gonna keep it short because as you can see the video is already too long so I decided to not touch anything even though some titles could be in between some tiers but then it's just gonna be a hot mess overall. I said what I said and it's not that serious actually. If some person, developer or whoever has a problem with it, well, do better. <laughs> After all, it's my list and my taste everyone can have a different opinion. If it's being on the respectable level, then that's all good with me. Concerning the giveaway, like we always do, I said five entries would win and well, there were only five. <laughs> so that will be I on the Icon, Johnny, Virtual Waypoint, Jink Ryotu and Hugh. Reach out to me through the email and we'll sort this out. Looking at the list again, I guess it was like a year of high highs and low lows. Even though most of the things that released this year are in the first three tiers, it doesn't necessarily mean that it was actually good. Like, to compare previous ones, I feel like overall it was the worst one, not by a long shot, but it seemed like a lot of things were packed and to be released as soon as possible. So I just hope next year with Quest 3 coming along, it's gonna be much more successful to keep up the pace, but I'm happy what we've got so far and it can't get any worse, only better. Right? <laughs> I can't read in the meta's mind, so that's all I have. <laughs> From me personally though, I want to thank you y'all for just watching me and supporting me all those years actually. It's been like what, four years already or like something around that and I have my own little piece of internet where I can do whatever I want and with people that I very much care about and just the overall vibe we've created here. I'm just very happy. <laughs> Let's see what the future will be and see you around as always.